Hi, my name is Rudolf. I'm an expat living in Finland. A few months ago, I did a video where I mentioned that I do occasional modeling assignments. And I decided that next time I had one, I would try and film a video around the whole process just so that you guys can see, if you're interested, um, what it entails. Now, unfortunately, I can't share any information about the client or about the campaign. So um, it'll be limited in what I can go into, but I'll just talk in general about the whole process and you can just come along and see what you think of it. Today is Wednesday and for this particular campaign, I'm going to be filming tomorrow and on Friday. I'm going to have to go to Helsinki because that's where the filming is being done. And um, I'll take you along with me when I go there and kind of show you what I can about the whole process. So the way the process starts is about three weeks before um, a shooting, I will get a call from a casting agent who will ask me if I'm interested in, um, in this project. And they will give the dates that the um, project will be shooting. And that's almost kind of like the first make or break because you have to be available those dates. So if you're not, then, you know, end of discussion. If you are, then you can kind of look to see, you know, um, what's happening and you can decide if you're interested in moving forward. So the kind of stuff that they provide with that initial contact will be the name of the client, the project, the production company, the shooting dates, the location, um, meaning the city, um, the rights. So kind of like how and where and how long the images will be used and what the pay is for, for that assignment. So based on that, you can kind of confirm if you're interested, if you're not interested, if you're not available, that sort of thing. One thing that you need to be mindful of is that usually if you've done a, um, an assignment for one company, you can't do an assignment for a competitor. So let's say if I have done an assignment for SAS, um, airlines and then um, I'm offered something for uh, Finnair, potentially I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I'd have to kind of um, investigate that. And that's also part of this vetting process in terms of what campaigns have you done and you know, are you under some kind of exclusivity um, where you can't do another campaign for a competitor during a certain period of time. Once you indicate your interest, sometimes you might be accepted straight away or most likely they have to then submit your, um, they have to approach the producer or the director to find out if they're interested in casting you for the role. If they are interested in casting you for the role, then you'll have some sort of audition um, process that you have to go through. In this particular case, I had to do an introductory video, which is very standard. Um, actually, usually if it's going to be kind of like a print type of, um, assignment, then you'll have to do photos, like you'll have to take selfies um, and then they'll also want like a full body type shot. Um, and it's a little bit strange, I think. Uh, when it, also, when, if you're doing a selfie, then you also have to kind of do your profiles as well. Um, they want to see everything. And to me, it's a little bit bizarre because even if you've just done an assignment for them like three months ago, six months ago, they always want current fresh photos, like, you know, within 24 hours type of thing. So I don't know if they're afraid that maybe someone's been in a car accident or, or something horrible's happened and they're not going to tell them. But anyway, you know, for photo shoots, you have to send in photos. If it's going to be something that's film based, uh, video based, then you'll have to do a, um, some sort of um, video. And that will normally be some sort of introduction video where you kind of introduce yourself just so that they can get an idea of how you speak on camera, how you move and whether or not, you know, you just kind of have the vibe they're looking for for the particular role. So in this role that I'm doing uh, tomorrow, I found out when they advised me that actually it's a non-speaking role. So I just feel like I'm kind of like going to be in the background, um, you know, like interacting with other people, but not, you know, in the front of the front of the camera, really just kind of like shoved to the side somewhere in the back. And actually that is reflected, I feel, in the in the pay for this position. So the, the, 
the pay on this role is actually lower. Um, I would say it's practically half of what I would normally get, but I'm expecting that I'm just going to be sort of like in the background and having it pretty easy as opposed to being in front and being right in front of the camera and being filmed close up. But um, let's see, I'm getting off track now. Now, the funny thing is, so for this one, I had to do um, a, an introduction video. And this one surprised me because my introduction video had to be in Finnish, which I was not happy about. Number one, I thought, well, it's a non-speaking role. And from what I understand, I'm just going to be like, you know, in the background, standing next to a bush or something. So I thought it was interesting that they still wanted speaking. And then on top of that, that they wanted it in Finnish. And when you are producing videos or photos or anything, like I said before, they want it right away. So it's not like they're giving you, you know, a week to put it together. You have usually like 24 hours, maximum 48 hours in order to put it together and get it off to them. And now actually it's funny, my, the last time I had um, a similar opportunity, the agency had called me and they had said specifically that the director had seen my photos and was really interested in me for that particular role. And I was really busy and like I said, you know, you don't have much time. So I just basically held up a phone, click, 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 did a few selfies. I didn't really like the, the pictures, but I just sent it off anyway because I'm like, hey, the director, you know, likes my look. And then I didn't get it. And I thought, oh, you know, um, I was a little bit arrogant. Um, you know, I'm thinking, hey, they're coming to me. Um, and so I sent in um, photos that I actually wasn't a hundred percent happy with because I thought ah, it's in the bag. So that was like a good lesson to learn to say, okay, don't take anything for granted, be professional. And if I am not happy with how it's come out, then I just need to do it again. Um, that's kind of related now because I thought, okay, how am I going to do this? I was actually very busy at the time. I had, I was doing several things. And like I said, there's no time to really sit down and do it. And now I have to like write this introduction because actually even if I'm doing it in, in English, I would still write it out first. I might not read it, but at least I've kind of gotten my thoughts down a little bit on paper before I just jump up and, and start speaking. And in the case of Finnish, there's no way I could jump in front of a camera and start speaking in Finnish. It's impossible. So I actually was going to not um, do, I was just actually going to back out because I thought, okay, no, I don't want to do it. But I decided, okay, let me just challenge myself and just go ahead and do it. And I did my introduction video. Um, I didn't think it was great. I might show it really, really quickly um, without any sound because I don't want anyone hearing me speaking Finnish on here. Uh, so let's see if I end up doing that. So anyway, I submitted that. And then also with this particular role as well, I also had to act out a scene which was supposed to be about two minutes long. I think mine was about two and a half minutes long, but again, because I was in such a rush, um, I didn't want to keep, you know, retaking it or work on editing it too much. So, um, you know, but it wasn't terrible. Um, well, obviously not terrible because I got the role. So that was sort of the next thing I sent it in. And then I think it probably took him about a week to come back to tell me that, okay, I was successful. And then by that time, it's about 10 days before, um, before the shooting. And I, um, I had already blocked off the day, so I wouldn't have anything planned. Uh, but then, okay, so now I know I've got it. And at this point, it's tomorrow that I need to go to Helsinki to, um, to do this shooting. So when they call you to tell you that, okay, yes, you've been successful, you've got the shooting, um, then now they kind of get into a few more details uh, about what's going to happen. In this particular case, it's a two-day shoot in Helsinki. And when they first contacted me about it, um, I let them know that, well, I don't live in Helsinki. And so I need a hotel for the first night uh, so that I don't have to travel all the way home to Salo and then come all the way back to Helsinki the next day. And um, I kind of waited for them to confirm they were going to pay the hotel before I then kind of officially said, yes, I'll do the role. So 
that's been um, taken care of. And so when I get my details about the shoot, they also tell me the name of the hotel where I'll be staying. Um, they give me the arrival address, which is the place where, um, where we're going to do the shooting. Um, it has also the call time. So that's when I have to be there. So if the call time in this particular case, call time is 930. That means I have got to be ready for, usually it's, um, you start off with doing the wardrobe and then, um, uh, once that's finalized, you then do the hair and makeup and then, you know, you have to be ready on set. So. Uh, my call time is 9.30 tomorrow morning, so I've got to be there, um, I'm guessing, for the, the wardrobe. Um, then they also tell you what the estimated end time is, so when we plan to finish tomorrow, and um, costume instructions. Now this one, there will be like a stylist there that will already have Oh, I also should have mentioned, so they also ask you your, your size, like, you know, your shirt size, your shoe size, your pants size, that sort of thing. And there will be a stylist who is already working with the production team who will have already gone shopping and um, have like a load of clothes for you to try on. For the um, production, they'll have kind of like a look they're looking for. So they'll kind of say, okay, we want him wearing something like brown or, you know, um, gray or blue or whatever they have they have a they have a list of kind of like what they're looking for you know we want an undershirt we want a big jacket or whatever so the stylist will already have done that shopping and then um, when you get there you know you'll get all that stuff tried on and then um, usually you'll check with they'll kind of run it by the um, client and say okay this is him they might take pictures of you in your clothes and and um, send it to the client if the client isn't on site and so anyway, you get all your stuff uh, organized. Now, in this case, they've also sent um, wardrobe, um, or they call it costume um, instructions, kind of like with the style and colors for the shoot. Now, based on that, I am gonna try and pick a few things out of my own wardrobe to take along, because like in particular with pants, I find that I don't find pants that fit me very easily. So I'm sure whatever they've bought is not going to fit me. So I, I already know I'm gonna to have to have my own pants. And then I'll have a couple shirts as well. Um, shirts aren't really that much of a problem. I'm sure I can wear something that they've got. Um, and then also shoes. I think I'll bring a pair of shoes, but you know, shoes are okay. I can usually fit in whatever they, whatever they um, provide. So all the stuff that I just mentioned, that comes in an email. And then attached to the email is a call sheet. And the call sheet has the details, has some of that information, but then also has more details. And that's kind of where anything you wanna know is on the call sheet. So on the call sheet, you'll have um, the producer, including their contact details, because let's say, for example, I get lost, I can't find it. You know, that's the person at, on the day who you can call and say, hey, I'm lost, what do I do, or whatever. So you've got that person's name and details. You've got the director, assistant director also, although in this case, their details aren't on there. Um, they've got the location where we're supposed to be and also instructions on transportation and parking. They have the start time and end time for each scene. So the call sheet has the whole day mapped out. So from the time that the um, production people, the riggers, the lighters, the uh, directors, what time everyone needs to get there to get stuff set up. And, um, you know, so that they always start off first, getting the scene and everything set up. And then, you know, the actors come in and that kind of thing. So it has kind of like a detail um, schedule like that. It also includes um, sort of like a script, which kind of tells you what each scene is and what's happening in each scene. Um, they have a storyboard. So um, each scene has like a, like a, a drawing to kind of um, indicate how it's supposed to be laid out. It has the cast for each scene and then it, um, which is good because it's broken out by time block. So I can just look for my name and I can see, okay, I need to be, I'm going to be, I need to be on the set from say 10 a.m. until 11. And then, um, you know, then there's a lunch break that I need to be back again at two o'clock until five o'clock or whatever it is. 
And then also there's a list of all the crew members. So, you know, who's doing lighting, who's doing set design, who's doing hair and makeup. And that's quite handy because when you're there, you know, you're just like meeting all these people and people are saying, oh, can you stand over there? Can you go over there? Oh, can you see that person? And at least I forget their names. So this time, you know, so if I have this handy on my phone, I can just double check. And so if I need to ask someone something, you know, I'm, I don't have to be, oh, excuse me, you, I can be like, hey, uh, Lisa, you know, blah, 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 whatever. So that's handy to have. So at this stage, I have all this information that I've just mentioned. I haven't read the script yet, so that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go ahead and read the script. Uh, make sure there aren't any surprises because within the script, it will kind of like tell you what you need to do. Do you have to, you know, that's where I would find out if I had lines, I'm not expecting any, um, but you know, that would be in there and then Things like, you know, do you have to do something like um, do a dance or do you need to do like some kind of funny handshake or, you know, something unusual. It'll kind of describe out the, um, the activities. Now, because these are like commercials, they're quite short, um, you know, it's nothing extensive. Uh, so this, from my experience, is not unusual that, you know, I'm just getting it the day or maybe two days before actual filming. Um, they're not like tons of lines or anything you need to memorize, you need to practice, but you know, it's good to just kind of know what you're getting yourself into. So at this stage, yeah, I'm going to go read the script. I'm going to go uh, review the costume instructions and figure out what I'm going to take. And I've got to be on a really early train to Helsinki tomorrow. My call time is 930. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to try and get a good night's sleep and uh, hopefully have a successful day tomorrow but you will find out because I'm gonna take you along with me. Okay, that's it for now, bye-bye.